Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Condo Insider that is put on by Hawaii Council of Community Associations. So happy to have you join us today. And today I am honored to have with me as my guest, Derek La Jolla, who is with Guardian Group. He has a big array of, um, of um, experiences. He was in the financial field. And so he has a lot of experience with that. He's also um, now has gotten into more um, site management. And um, also with, with site management, he's also been involved with um, some condos that were also going under repairs. So helping to coordinate all of that kind of stuff. So what we're really gonna talk to him about is, cause he does some um, site management. And I've always been asked about, you know, some condos are thinking about maybe transitioning to a site manager, but they're not sure. So they ask about what the difference are. So that's really what this show is going to be about today is like, what do condos need to look at when they're thinking about transitioning from away from an on-site to an off-site and then the opposite? Because I've heard that recently um, in the past couple of months, you know, that kind of topic coming up to my ears. So Derek, first off, what should a condo look at when they're um, looking to, maybe they have a, um, they're looking to go to an off-site manager. So they call it site managers, right? Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, great question. Um, it happens all the time. It goes back and forth. I think when they are considering going off-site, um, most often than not, you know, it probably also, also starts with the budget. Um, you know, when they're going off-site, um, you know, it's either they can, um, one of the options is to go to a third-party vendor. That's why they're called site management companies. Um, you know, deferring, you know, ba basically going to a third party provider for those services. There are obviously advantages. Um, one is, you know, you're contracting out basically all of that service. So there won't be disruption of services. Um, a lot of times when you have an onsite resident manager, now you have to also deal with a lot of the you know, HR, the labor, the labor part of that. Um, person wants to go on PTO. Um, you know, uh, the resident manager gets hurt on the job. Um, you, you really do look at more from an employer employee standpoint. Not to say site manager doesn't have that either, but um, there is that option of having a third party provider. But when they do also go to a site manager, um, most often than not, it's, it's usually because maybe they don't need the manager there all the time. You know, one of the things that, one of the reasons why a lot of boards or owners like to have a resident manager. Um, peace of mind. Um, a lot of times, maybe a lot of the activities doesn't happen during the day. Maybe it happens during the evening. Maybe there's, um, you know, situations where they, you know, they want the resident manager to be there to enforce rules that maybe violations are happening at night, like noise or, um, you know, maybe, you know, they just like the convenience of if somebody has an issue and they have somebody to just knock on the door for. Um, but I think one of the biggest uh, things to consider when you're doing that is does the association own a unit? Um, when you have a resident manager, usually you know the the association already owns the unit, so you know it is convenient for them to already have the resident manager. Um, when they don't own the unit, now that becomes you know an added cost, you know from your operating expenses because you got to rent out the unit for the for the resident manager. Um, you know their utilities, all of that have to be paid for, so. From a cost standpoint, I, I feel like a lot of times, you know, most often just then the duties that are being required is the you own a unit. And nowadays, right, it is it is expensive to rent those out. So yeah, um, that's, that's probably something that all associations should consider if they want to go that route. So whether it's an on-site or even a site manager, um, I've had conversations with some that said, essentially, you want them to do the same amount of same work. So you still have to detail out um, in either case, whichever way the condo is going to choose, you still have to detail out a job description and what the expectations are. Um, so that could, so, so with some people, I said that could be the starting point of, um, of creating your, um, also your employee manual, so to speak, right? It's really right. detailing out your job description um, and it, and it should be detailed the point of like how do you want your grass to be cut how low you know or certain trees everybody has their own interpretation of how they expect the tree to be trimmed you know 
Some just whack it and then let it grow back because that's less time consuming where <laughs> others want it to be. You know, you can trim this little one every once in a while, you know. I said you have to really decide how how you want your your landscaping, the maintenance done. Um, especially the walkways, you know, you have the drip marks, right. you know, carrying out the trash, yeah. you know. Um, and especially that the gray I mean that, that gray paint just stained. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy after a while, you know. So, um, but with a site management, you of course would also detail out that out for the site people to maintain yeah. that property to that expectation, right? And yes. detail out. There's some I said, take even pictures to include in your contract. So you yeah. have a visual of your expectation. So what if they went from like a site manager? Um, they already tried the resident manager. They're kind of doing the site manager kind of a thing, but they're thinking about doing like security guards, mm. like in the off hours, like evening time. You know, mm. they have someone during the day and then the evening time. Um, and it really, it all depends too on how much stuff is going on in the condo. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a lot of household violations or disorderly conduct, that kind of stuff, right? Um, but even again, then you would have to have their, your, um, security guards trained on house rules and how to handle that, right? Totally. Yeah, I think you hit in the nail. One of the first things to do is really identify your needs or what is the priority of what you're trying to achieve in a property. Mm -hmm. So like you said, if you want a site manager, resident, even a resident manager, e either one, and let's say, you know, townhome associations, that's a great example. You know, you have a lot of landscaping. So there is an ROI if you have a state manager that can landscape, that can maintain a lot of those common areas, because that's probably the biggest work that's being done on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, five days a week or however many hours you have him or her contracted out. Mm -hmm. um, so even when we, you know, I get requested for a proposal, first thing I always ask is, you know, what are you guys trying, what, what do you guys need, right? What is your immediate need? What is the biggest focus you guys will want us to do? Because if it is maintenance, then I would have to have a fit for that property. But for some associations, maybe they have already the landscaping contracted out. They have maintenance people contracted out. So we just provide administrative duties. And one of that is coming in inspection, you know, um, walking around, interpreting the house rules, um, helping, the, helping the property manager furnish um, violation letters and keeping track of those violations. Right. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting because as we come to, you know, as we discuss this more and more, I mean, everybody knows that properties age. So what ends up happening is needs are constantly changing as well. So with that, right, you, before when things are new, you just have to be pretty general with all the areas of, you know, um, condo management. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you have all, all owners who, you know, really care about the property. They're not really renting it out. So you, there's maybe not a lot of violations or everybody's still playing good neighbor. Um, over time, you don't know what that ratio looks like. So that becomes a major issue. Um, you know, we, we noticed it too, like, you know, pets are becoming more common, right? So maybe that becomes a mix. So then, you know, then you start to decide, okay, you know what, this year, maybe we want to focus on getting all the behaviors back in place. And we need someone to really, you know, um, enforce the house rules. Or maybe over time, like you said, landscaping is just becoming a lot more of a bigger need. So that becomes a focus. So like you said, as, as the more you can detail out um, kind of what you expect, um, let's just say even if it wasn't just a resident, let's say you had all unlimited budget and you just said, okay, <laughs> I'm going to contract out every facet of managing a property. So from maintenance to um, house rule enforcement, which is like security services to maintenance to handyman repairs. You could actually kind of get creative. Now you can decide, do, does it make sense? Is it feasible to contract these out? Or does one person exist that can do all of that? And let's face it, it's so hard to find a jack of all trades. I think that's why we see a lot of turnover. Yeah. Someone that's great with landscaping, someone that's great with maintenance, maybe they're great at that, but it's, you know, it'd be unrealistic to also expect them to be great at house roof violations and typing out those letters when they're just out on the field all day, you know, like, and we, we can take a look at that from any industry, you know, from construction to, um, you know, I mean, any of the labor services industry, some want to be superintendents, but then you have some project managers that are really good at like, you know, the, the, the paperwork, let's just say, right? So I, I think that's 
um, something to every association should really basically when they're planning that out, how to be realistic. Can you yeah, really... like they... well, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. No, I just, like be realistic. You know, I think when you lay it out, could you really find somebody that can fulfill all those duties in a 40 hour work week? Yeah. And with um, the workforce, the way it is today, I mean, it is, it's so different. And I think, um, like you said, it's hard to find someone that can do everything. So like if you, when you're interviewing, I, I, I would imagine when you're interviewing someone, I mean, you can find, kind of find what their strengths are, what they like to do. Some of them like to do landscaping, you know, but they may not be strong in maybe some kind of administrative things. So you may have to, you know, realign um, what the job description might be and the salary, because you might have to hire someone else to compensate for what that guy, but but the workforce is really hard. So sometimes I think you have to work with what you have and get creative and, um, you know, do things based upon the person's strength because I think they will last longer and that's what you want. You don't want the constant turnover. You really want that person and, and build upon their strengths. And eventually maybe they might be able to get a handle on um, right. that administrative part of it because, come on, learning computer skills can take a little bit while, you know. <laughs> Even yeah. Microsoft, when they do an update, you're like, oh, my God, what did they change now? You know, it takes a little yeah. while to get used to it, even though you use it every day. So um, I think mean, that's where some some condos have to have to kind of like realize that. And then one of the other things that I heard, and I heard this um, really a long, long time ago, and it's always stuck in my head, is um, when people come home from work, you know, they work during the day and they don't see anybody around. You know, and I said, well, you have to kind of realize that they've probably already been out doing stuff during the day when you're at work. So you kind of can't really expect them to be visible 24 seven, you know, and then um, and then you have some other some other um, managers or site people that kind of they know how to manage their time. They got to do some yard landscaping so they know that it's either in the morning or late afternoon. They don't want to be out there in the hot sun getting dehydrated, you know? So I really, so some associations need to also take that into consideration that, you know, some of them, they may do their jobs during certain times of the day that makes it easier. Even the employees, if right. they'd rather do certain things in the late afternoon because of the, the, the heat factor or some things early in the morning, they got to kind of like be a, a little semi-flexible, hear them out as to the reasons why. Because they could be very valid reasons, like they're going to be shooting down a lot of things. You don't want to do it when there's going to be constant traffic, people going to work, coming home. You don't want wet sidewalks, right? You know. Um, so what happens when, um, like, on a, I guess the, for me, the big thing is like a, a site manager. How often is the expectation of them to, to be there? And and I would think the condo itself has to think about the future. Okay, if you're going to switch to a site manager. Do you have any repair projects in the in looming? And how is that site manager going to be able to manage that when he's also has to manage other properties? Mm -hmm. right? right. Yeah. So it's a great. Yeah, you bring up a great point. So same thing when we we get request requests for proposals, I, I ask a lot of questions. Um, is there an office? Um, because obviously we we would have to know how to for that work day to look like. Um, office. You know, do they have support? Um, what are the projects coming up? How many water leaks have you been having? Because that would give us an indication. How many after hour calls? Because again, you hit it right on the nail. There, we, you know, I think one of the things that aren't talked about a lot, which should be, but because it's across all industry, is the burnout rate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this it's not it's not a you know not a, a, a easy job, um, and a lot of times we're dealing with so many owners that. You know, it's not personal. It's just, you know, they're there to, you know, the owners have complaints. And so a lot of managers, no matter if it's a general manager, resident manager, the manager itself, when even when we hire, I mean, we asked about that, like, you know, um, angry tenants are going to come at you, you know, give us the situations. What is your tolerance for it? Because it gives us indication, you know, how much they can, customer service, how much they can handle and how much they take it personally. So, you know, with that, right, like, um, those have to be addressed as well in order to have a long-term successful partnership or like 
a long-term successful like employee or uh, um, a contractor if you're using a third party if you want it to be long-term and sustainable and and you could work through it there's going to have to be a lot of working things you know between parties and i think those have to get addressed so like you said yeah what are the projects being done because if they didn't sign up for it and all of a sudden you throw them all of those expectations that's when there's a gap i think when there's unrealistic expectation in two parties and you and i know like that's kind of a lot of times when disconnects happen it's yeah. like Right? Like the guy has, party, yeah. when he has no experience in how to even right. coordinate the, you know these people are coming on site what do i do you know <laughs> um that can be really scary yeah. and i've had some questions from some other condos like yeah again going back to workforce i mean the the, the pool can be very you know mm -hmm. very minimal and um like i had a conversation with one person they were looking at these resumes you know one had past paralegal experience and another one had passed his thing was boats and I go that's yeah. a red flag <laughs> end up at the harbor walking distance away uh -huh. all the time you know but you know they had no resident management type or even management type of experience and I said so what if you started them off without a manager title hmm. and maybe put them into like a um a different kind of title and kind of ease him into that because he's got a, he's he's, he's going to be into a big learning curve right you know, um, right. and maybe bring in a um, another site manager that can kind of mentor or guide them along. It might be an additional cost, but it, you you might not only need it for only maybe a couple of months. Right. You know, but maybe do a um, something specialist or something. Mm -hmm. You know, versus a manager because you know someone coming from no experience and all of a sudden being a manager that can be kind of a little hard. Right. To you know, to kind of coordinate all of that stuff, um, you know, like um, I remember on the mainland, my niece was—I mean, she was only a teenager and she became a, a store manager. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Responsibility <laughs> for keys and you know all this kind of stuff. I'm like, what? <laughs> She's in high school. Like what? <laughs> you know. So I was kind of like a little alarmed with that when I go, oh, that's kind of scary. But um, just because you're hiring someone this doesn't automatically mean you have to give them a manager title right if you kind of give them an interim title and let them work into that um you know and then also make sure you check with um like we always check with john Kenork. he's he's a big condo labor attorney that we always refer to and make sure your contracts are all in sync as well right so tell me about some of the bigger condos that have general now oh yeah yeah, so general manager, um, you know, again, so, you know, if you're a site manager, you got to wear all the hats. When you become a general manager, you have staff that become specialists in those in those fields. But I always say, too, I mean, you get general, every general manager should have at least done that work or know about that work, because that's the only way you're going to quality control it. So, for example, if you're going to head the different departments, um, you know, in, with, with like housekeeping, for example. How will you know if that's because it's so subjective? How do you know if that's you know like a great quality? How do you know if their working schedule is accurate to the needs of the building? Are you overstaffed, understaffed? Um, landscaping? Do you at least have some idea of you know bougainvilleas and hedgers, mowers, and because you will be ordering equipment, putting in gas? How do you know they're not you know? And then how do you make it? like um you know efficient for example for is like okay do i need a two or three man crew to rotate around this property do i need to just outsource it at that point security security guards okay do you, do you understand you know um the the regular swing and graveyard shift um how do they patrol how do they enforce rules what are they looking for um how do they answer tenants um and then you know and then you're your office managers, your admin, you know, like how do you, can you quality control their, um, you know, their paperwork or their, their reports and all that. So I think, you know, it's, so I always say, if you want to be a good general manager, there's not something, and this is, again, this, I think this is a general lesson anyway, as a leader, you wouldn't tell somebody to do something you couldn't do yourself. And that's just from a respect level anyway. Um, and that's kind of always been the cornerstone also of guardian management. When I tell um, a lot of our managers, if you're trying to climb up in the industry, yes, don't, you know, you want to humble yourself and can you clean? <laughs> yeah. You know what it looks like, you know what, you know, 
Um, can you, and, and that's the process of always learning and evolving. So everybody has to start somewhere. And I think it's like anything, if you're missing some fundamentals along that process, maybe that's when it might actually surface, that weakness will surface up in like the most, you know, um, stressful situation. And I've seen that quite a bit, you know, in my time, even prior before that, you know, consulting some of these buildings and um, picking on some of these buildings, either interim or whatever they may be. You know, I look into operations and who I fit in there needs to be able to do every facet of the job or else how do you, like you said, if you're putting together duties and scope of work, I hope you know that what that looks like yourself. Yeah. Um, right? and, and you don't see too many general managers that all of a sudden they graduate from college or whatever they may be. And all of a sudden they jump to general manager. I think they'd be overwhelmed and they won't succeed. I think a lot of them probably start from lower level, work their way up. You know, whether it's F and B manager operations, and then they move into other departments from hotels. I mean, whatever that may be, they right. they, they, they work from their work from the ground up, and then they right. really learn every facet of the operations. And I think that's what these GMs, you know, the ones that are they they, they for sure know how to. You know, how to work part of their team. And it's the it's the respect and the appreciation for for the work, you know, because they they. They've done it. They've been there. So they have a um, a level of respect and dignity for that work that the other person is doing that they used to do way right. back when, you know? Right. And, and like you said, there's different ways to clean. Like someone was complaining to me about the way a certain person mopped the hallway and, you know, with that gray paint, how it has little grooves in it. Mm -hmm. and they go, no, they're supposed to do it this way. I go, bottom line is, is it clean when they're done? Right. <laughs> Whichever right. way they do it, is it clean? Right. <laughs> right right because you know, it was kind of i mean i heard it from both sides two different people different times of the day and i i told them i go i can mop my floor one way you can mop it a different way but right. at the end of the day, is it clean <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> or mark that thing that's the bottom line you know so and you know security guard too when you're a general manager or even any manager that oversees all these different people you have to understand like security guards they're licensed individual so you need to know what the licensing requirements are um and even like an overview of of um what they need to do in order to get licensed right you have to pass and do the course um i don't think they have to do it, but like they they get renewed every so many years right um so you have to as a general manager or any manager if you're going to hire people you have to know what their scope is um, especially when you're talking about licensed individuals, just like with contractors, you know, you have to know what that expectation is. Um, you have to understand your own bylaws and declarations of as, like the project's going to require bonding because you're going to be the support team for your board. Right. So you have to also help the board in making sure they follow what they need to follow. Right. Permitting, yeah, yeah permitting has its issues, but it's getting fixed. You know, it is taking a slow turn, but it's not, you can't change everything overnight over there. But it is making some, some really good changes. Um, and they've kind of improved some of their turn times that I've heard from other people. Um, and these are like bigger contractors that have these projects. They said they've seen some, some changes. So mm -hmm. it's good, you know, and that's really yeah. good to hear. We just have to be patient. You can't, you can't move the mountain overnight. Um, yeah. So any other, any other suggestions you have for, for condominiums, for boards that are, are thinking of switching one way or another, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, so for resident managers, um, you know, they are, they have to be an employee of the association. And a lot of times that it's when they are looking for, um, you know, whether it's a resident manager or a site manager. Um, and what it, I do it as well in my hiring practices and continuation, right? It's one of the things I always check in with them is what, what does the, Candidate, what are they looking for? What is the candidate looking for? You know, and I think that's something that's obviously when you're doing interviews and you're doing, you know, you're you're, you're trying to maybe you know recruit um, a potential candidate. A lot of times, you know, it's so easy to kind of go through the interview and the resume and you hear what they want to hear, or mm -hmm. you say what you you what you, you know it's just it's you're pretty much you know kind of groomed to do interviews, right? But at the end, it's kind of like you know what are they trying to achieve? What do they want out of it? And do you see that as a long term fit? So uh, oftentimes, like, you know, you see a resume and like what we said, if the duties don't align with the expectation, okay, how long will this candidate stay? 
are they overqualified? Are they underqualified? You know, um, do you have certain things that can make them safe for a long time? So no matter which they choose, like, you know, I, I know a lot of um, employees, they want to just um, learn, develop and grow and become better. And then do you have that in the budget to, to you know, give them milestones and increases if they're performing well? So, you know, one of the things is like, you know, resident manager, you, you're basically putting a lot of investment in somebody already. If you're going to go the resident manager route, I mean, they're going to move in, right? They're, they're settled. They're there to stay, um, you know, and then, but how do you make that a three, four, five-year plan? Because if you're, if you're retaining somebody for four or five years, you're doing a pretty good job, you know, and, and, and you're happy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so if, if you don't, it, but if it's a trial thing, then sure, go to site manager route. <laughs> you know, that, that's a little bit easier to, to you know, cut the, cut the relationship as opposed to yeah. if somebody's living on site. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you want to go with a third party vendor to see how that may look like until, you know, you want to go the full blown resident manager. And even if you own the unit, maybe you could rent it out for a year, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. some of those costs. And then you can at least just test it out before you really, um, you know, decide, okay, you know, we're going to be committed to this person. That's um, a good point to rent it. I mean, you know, if you're going to go site management, but you already have a resident manager unit, rent it out for a little while because that might help offset some certain things. Um, I mean, that's a good point. You know, you could try that. I mean, trying is better than not trying at all. At least you can say you tried it. Um, but again, sometimes you can't, if it doesn't work, you, I wouldn't like say, oh no, we tried it, it was horrible. I mean, it could have been just in the visual. Learn from that lesson. Like what could you have done to make it better? You know, um, did you guys fail in having written documents for him to follow? Right. You know, and things like that. And, um, and if you're going to hire someone, to me, is um, like when it comes to repairs, if right. they're willing to learn, right. you know, or even try, try to give them that opportunity because it just makes them feel that much better, you know, and, and you're helping for someone to learn the business that the condo can benefit from, you know. Uh, like when, when I, I would always, a big advice, to give, a, a big advice, our recommendation I'd make to a lot of associations when you do the hiring part is there's no such thing as a perfect candidate. We know because we hire all the time. We're constantly recruiting. We're constantly interviewing. A lot of times, you know, it is a niche market. It's not like somebody goes to school and say, I want to be a resident manager. There's really no pathway to it. It's really like a hands-on experience. You either stumble on it, you get lucky and you got, you got your way in. I see job descriptions saying, I want a five-year minimum experience with an arm. Well, now you're limiting your pool. I mean, yeah. you have to get somewhat creative. We only have how many people here on, in Hawaii for a labor market. So what we do is we get creative. We look at a resume. We, we look at all the, maybe the little X factors, right? Like, okay, this person was in customer service. All the references are great things. They show up on time. They're hardworking. Um, they've progressed. They've stayed in organizations for a long time so you know they're committed they're not just jumping all over the place i could work with that i could work with a lot of um soft skills and, and true character i think that's something that sometimes we overlook i mean we can look at something on a paper it could be great on paper but if character is not there i'd rather have the person with character that i can groom and learn and then from there can i set up this person for success in the next two three years giving them training putting them in a lot of classes that was going to benefit them and if they succeed give them more uh, incentives to work harder work better and that's you know that's the you know increasing your salary or giving a bonus and i think that is a big hr more of an hr discipline than anything because right. whether it's in the condo world or any other industry every organization faces turnover turnover is very costly to any yeah. employer because of the training and the learning curve that was already set in place and now you got to redo it all over again so i think more more than whether you get an on-site manager resident manager i think the real question is how do we keep this person for a long time and are we choosing the right person that's going to stay for a long time <laughs> yeah. i see more often than not i, I you know I, I see even for us you know i, I got staff that said this is a great person this person's great i'm like I don't think this person is going to stay with us, though. You can tell that, you know, they, this is just great for them. You need but that's okay. Now. Yeah, but that's okay if we are very transparent about it, and, and we also need that just for now, right? And so I think that's, you know, that, that's something that sometimes overlooked. Yeah, it's process. almost nice knowing from the first, like, hey, you know, I'm looking for something now, but, you know, I really don't know. And we all know the job market's kind of really mm -hmm. kind of weird, you know. 
And, you know, he may settle into it. He may like it. You know, yeah. he's never had this job before because, but he's like iffy, but he applies and he, you know, everybody likes him and, you know, and he could, and he could be upset going, well, I'm not sure I want to try it, you know, and he may mm-hmm. be your guy, right? You okay. know, you'd be surprised. A lot of our most successful managers that have, we actually were able to place them to become resident managers because they go back in our experience, but they had all the other great that we knew they're good because you're going to learn the condo management side, the X's and O's, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't teach the other stuff sometimes, you know, the, like I said, the work ethic and, and the ability to learn quick. I mean, everybody's ability to learn is, is, is a wide range. Right. <laughs> so, you, you, and you know, once you start to identify that and, and you start to really have a game, have a plan with your employee or your manager, I think no matter what, both sides are going to be pretty happy with being committed. Um, you know, and again, that's just from like any industry you go in, right? It's like, okay, you know, we are here to commit to you for two years and this is what it's going to look like. We're going to put you in a, once you get settled in, after you pass a six month probation, maybe we'll give you a, this increase, you know, because there is going to be a negotiation back and forth. Somebody's going to ask for 60 and say, you know what, we'll give you 57 to start. If you can make your six month and it's satisfactory, we'll give you that 60. So it's constantly, you know, like they have something to work for and you have something to measure. And, it, and a lot of it could just be proficiency. So, okay, in six months, you show me a proficiency in the governing documents. And we can measure that through how many house rule violations have come through and how have you, you know, uh, resolved that issue, how quickly, you know, the property manager may be able to look at it and say, you know what, you interpret that correct, or you did not interpret that correct. You're able to turn around really quick in, in issuing that letter. Um, same thing with um, maintenance things. They're like, okay, you know what? If you get proficient in getting bids, right? Like how well are you in getting a standardized bids, getting us three bids, putting in a report. I think those things are measurable. And then that way you can start to, and also the employee is going to feel a lot more motivated because they know they have something that's objectively equal to chase. Because <laughs> what is good, right? Good is always going to be pretty relative. So uh, I, I think that's a, that's that's going to be a big factor, I think, for AOAOs in the next, I don't know how many, 10 years just because of the labor market. Okay, so one last question. Sure. So how do you suggest your your people that you hire, um, how do you suggest that they handle when a resident or it could be a board member that tell them how to do their job? <laughs> all right, that was all the time. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, this is where customer service has to come in first. Just say, okay, I hear you. You know, a lot of it is hearing the complaints and everybody has complaints. And, you know, and I always say this, you know, like learn the condo law, learn the 514B, because in there it says a uh, board member outside of a board meeting is an owner like everyone else. So they have, you know, the, you know, they could voice their opinion like everyone else. But also right before you get to the job, know your protocol. You know, who do you answer to? The property manager, the board president, kind of like a trifecta. Mm-hmm. Uh, know your chain of command. Listen bring it up to, you know, escalate it to the necessary parties that need to address that. Um, you know, most certainly you have, uh, every resident manager, site manager, building manager, general manager, um, just like in any job, right? You, you need to know who you have to report to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you got to know when to bring things up um, because yeah. probably that's not going to be your battle. It needs to be escalated to whoever is, you know, um, you know, the higher up, you know, <laughs> um, one that's supposed to be handling that situation yeah um, and i think um it, that's the hardest thing for a resident manager or a site person or even the landscaper guy that's trimming the trees right, yeah. you know someone's coming up going oh you're trimming the trees oh i used to like it they're better this way you know and it kind of gets really hard you know <laughs> for them to absorb all of that being you know he thought he was doing a good job and someone's criticizing him like no you know that's kind of yeah, hard. So I, yeah, so I always say we have like default things. Like, for example, you know, somebody's saying that, oh, okay, no, I understand. I'll bring it up to my immediate supervisor. I'll bring it up to the property manager and the board president and the board that, um, you know, um, that you saw this or you wanted me to, you know, focus on that first. Um, I apologize. I just got directed to do this. This is a task I've been directed and, and you know, um, that I got to follow. Um, but I will certainly bring up your concern to um, the property manager the board or the board president um because that's something that's probably going to be spoken about in board meetings but same thing if they don't know the answer to something okay let me write this down like let me get back to you (laughs) do your research (laughs) if it's in the gray area make sure you ask the property manager first and make sure you inform the board
board so that you're not going to make a decision or you're not going to inform the <laughs> owner on something that's completely inaccurate that could make you look, you know, that could cost your job or give you, give you a reprimand. Because I see that happen all the time too. Like you, it's tough because resident managers or site managers, there's a lot of owners who have all of, you know, who have an opinion, who want, you know, they, they feel like, you know, every they interpret things all different ways. But, you know, as a, as a manager, one of the most important key things is to make sure, like, you, know, you want to make sure that how you interpret it, what, we're just there to do the common area. A lot of times they say, oh, you can come up to my room. I need this fixed. And, you know, that's when you're, you're, you're starting to meddle into some you know, murky areas, you know, just because you want to please everybody. And you, and let's face it, you know, we got we, we tell managers, you can't please everybody. You're just being fair. You're going to do your job to the best of your ability. You're, you're going to make mistakes, but make sure you also know your, um, you know, your duties, your parameters. And, what you can yeah. and, can. and there's some owners, I told them, I said, well, you know, because they're going, well, he's, he's disrupting this. It used to look so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, let me ask you this question. And if it's pertaining to landscaping, I said, is he changing something around? And I said, is he, maybe you should ask him a question, like, is there something broken? Because there was one, I mean, they were explaining to me about one area that they were kind of taking it apart. And I said, so, if it's constantly wet, that area, to me, that's a red flag. <laughs> and that's probably yeah. why yeah. they're doing right. something, because there's a leak somewhere. Right. you know right. or they're trimming something because the rats will trip climb the trees and jump from roof to roof right. or it'll scratch against the building and it's disruptive to that person where that wall is you mm -hmm. know i said so you guys can't be always like well we like it this way there's sometimes reasons why certain things are going to get done for That's certain right. reasons and it's maintenance issues preventive maintenance That's you right. know trying to figure things out so i said you guys have to be open listening and and if you and listening to the whys of why it's being done because not a lot of times there's a reason why <laughs> there is yeah i know it's, it's interesting because you know we, we we manage townhome associations and you know honestly the the landscape and the, you know all of their pots and plants it looks beautiful but you know it, it starts to touch the eaves it starts to touch the roof but in the house rules right it says there are limited common elements so you know, and that's why we always train our managers to read the rules, and they're there for good cause. You know, as to make sure you maintain the value. Like once they start to go through, you know, um, you know the uh, the fences and all that, it's just that's more cost to the association to repair it later. So if if they can kind of you know communicate that to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one area was and that that area we we ended up cutting it. And that's where we figured out there was all the rats for congregating. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was just trimmed down to bear, kind of get rid of them or get them under control at least. So yeah. we could see not where they're hiding and stuff like that. So we had told that some people they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they were fine with it. <laughs> when you're solving that, you know, pest control right. problem. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, Derek. So I think we're at the nearing of our show. I okay. really, really thank you for spending the time with us um, oh, and God. going through it. Um, this was very helpful, and um, I think it'll give a lot of um, boards some insight on their decision making, on their management, their on site management for their properties. I really appreciate you um, mm -hmm. joining me today. It was very informative. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you for having me, Grace. Okay. Thank you, Derek. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Hope to see you guys again next week for another show. Mm -hmm.